to kind of uh, learn a little lesson here, hopefully, is we're going to look at two students um, who are both good students who try hard and who want to do well. So they're kind of like a clone of the other one. But student number one does some things when they read that make them forget almost everything. Student number two does some things that help them remember almost everything. So again, we want to figure out what is that? Like, what's the secret? Okay, so almost every number that I put up here while I teach this is going to be minutes. So it's kind of good to kind of keep that in mind. So here's what we say about student number one. Again, tries really hard, but has a problem. They sit at home or in the library for 90 minutes and they read. 90 minutes straight, so that's hour and a half. Kind of a long time to read, but people do that all the time. So what we're going to say, and I'm going to ask for a little help from you, and I want to get some participation on this. The first 10 minutes out of the 90 should actually be very good for this person's memory. In other words, they're going to remember a lot of what they <coughs> read during that time. Why would a person remember a lot from the beginning? Besides the fact that it's the beginning. It can be the most basic sometimes. What kind of energy level do you have when you start reading compared to later? Well, hopefully um, you're at your best when you start. You could be tired when you open up a textbook, but half hour from now, you're going to be ready to fall asleep. So you're at your best. And also, this is kind of sad to say, you're not bored yet. Um, not that textbooks are always boring, but you know how that goes. And so when you open up the book and you lean forward <coughs> and you concentrate, everything is really good for a few minutes. And so you're going to remember a lot of what you read. Now, here's the mystery of the day. So again, I want you to try to figure this one out. The last 10 minutes should be the worst minutes because you're exhausted by then. But these are actually among the best minutes. So why would the last minutes of reading stick in your brain better. <coughs> yeah, and you also know by then that you're almost finished. I don't know if you do this. Whenever I show this to students, most people look at me like, oh my gosh. They thought they were the only one who did this, but most people do it. When I was in college, I would open up a textbook and start reading. And I would read for about 10 minutes, and then I would stop and do this. And see how many pages were left. And it was always a lot, I thought. Oh, God. Then I'd read for about three more minutes. And it was like I was climbing a mountain. Like, when am I ever going to get done? But when I finally checked for like the 10th time, and I realized, <clears throat> wait a minute, a couple pages. I'm almost done. I could have been ready to fall asleep. All of a sudden, I get a shot of adrenaline, extra energy, because I know just a few more minutes, I'm done. And so then I start concentrating, and then it sticks better, right? So all good. Well, how much time does that leave in the middle? 70. 70. So you didn't know this was a math workshop, but it is. Um, what happens during this time? Bad things, OK? This is where your mind wanders all over the place. You're there, you're gone, you're there, you're gone. Are you going to remember a lot of what you read during this time? No, because you're not focused as well as you should be. So that means this person who again is trying really hard ends up having about 20 minutes that are good for their memory, beginning and end, and then 70 minutes that are bad. And that's a pretty sad use of their time. Okay. So what does student number two do? that makes them remember way more? Well, they do this. They do three things, three habits. The first one is the most obvious. This number is way, way too big. Unless you're a very unusual type of person, our ability to concentrate doesn't last 90 minutes. Sometimes it doesn't last 90 seconds. You know, we have a hard time. So what I'm going to suggest is that rather than reading for 90 minutes, that you read for no more than about 30 at one time or at one sitting. It doesn't mean 30 minutes a day because sometimes people have a lot more reading to do than that, but it's at one time. Now, if I gave you a choice to sit down and read a textbook for 90 minutes or 30, what would you pick? Yeah, I, if you say 90, uh, that's impressive. But most people say, this sounds so much better. 90 minutes, just thinking about that sounds exhausting. 30 minutes is like, 
a little sprint. So even if you don't like the reading, you can hang in there for 30 minutes just fine. Well, we're going to put the same two numbers here. And then, what do we have in the middle now? 10. And you're going to see a whole lot of 10s coming up here in the next few minutes. So first thing to do, shorten way up on the reading to around 30 minutes. The second um, habit that this person follows that helps them involves the number 5. And that's 5 minutes. But what's the 5 minutes for? Break. Yeah, it's for break. Right? I ask students all the time, and this is kind of a funny question for me to ask. I say, when you're reading, you have a lot of reading to do, do you take regular five-minute breaks? <clears throat> and you know what most students say? They say, no, I don't. And I say, well, what do you do? And some people say, I prefer the three to four hour break or the wait till tomorrow break. And I say, yeah, I know, I get it. And you know why some people do this? They know themselves, and they know that once they get up, they're never coming back. They just kind of know that, so that's why they sit there, and it's like they put their seatbelt on and say, I'm going to just sit here until I'm done. So they put in the time, but look what happens. Not good, okay? So five-minute break, and I'm not going to get into this all that much just for the sake of time today, but one of the things that I think is really smart for a student to do during a five-minute break when they're going to come back and read some more is to stretch. So in addition to using the restroom and getting a quick little snack or something to drink, something like that, it's a really good idea to stretch, and here's why. Um, you know as well as I do that sitting and trying to read a textbook is um, hard work, just trying to concentrate and stay awake. And so what happens to most people as they're reading is that their eyes might start getting kind of <clears throat> sore or tired, right? But usually some other part of their body starts to ache or get sore as well, could be the neck, back, shoulders. I've had even some people say, oh boy, my butt just starts hurting and I think, wow, how are you sitting? But anyway, everybody's different. You know when you're feeling fine, it's hard to concentrate on reading. When you have an ache or a pain, you start thinking only about the ache and the pain. So if you sat there for 30 minutes and you're leaning over and reading and a pain started to develop right here, and then the 30 minutes ended and you said, okay, break time, and you put the book aside and you grabbed, let's say, a newspaper or a magazine, and you just sat and read for five minutes, well, that's a break. But what's going to happen to this while you're doing that? Probably nothing. It's going to stay there. And then when you start reading again, it's going to get worse and worse. And pretty soon, that's all you're going to be thinking about, and you lose your focus. So after you've used the restroom, gotten something to drink or whatever, right before you sit back down, it's good to stand there and just kind of move around a little and try to sense what might be a little sore and just kind of exercise it a little. This isn't... Um, an aerobic workout or anything else. You could do that some other time, but just for a minute, kind of stretch it out. Then when you sit down, you should be back almost to normal and then be able to concentrate better. So I think this is helpful. And then the other thing I wanted to ask you about related to this is what should you not do during a five minute break? You're gonna come back and you're gonna read here. So what would be a mistake? Eat is possible, depending. What else? TV. Uh, you know what, I, and I don't want you answering this because this is a personal thing, but here's what I want you to think about. What is there in your house or apartment that draws you to it like a magnet? And once you start doing it, you lose all track of time. Everybody has something different. For some people, it's the TV. For some people, it's the computer. For some people, it's this. I, I don't know if you've ever done this before. It's a really dumb thing, and I used to do this in the beginning of college. I'd say this. I have a five-minute break. What am I going to do? Let me just rest my eyes for five minutes, and then I'll start reading again. And then an hour later, <laughs> wake up from my nap and then go to bed. Bad idea. Um, telephone is another thing. Sometimes once, if somebody loves the telephone, once they get on there, an hour can pass in like two minutes. I've had people say, I'm going to just go on and just check my email and look at my Facebook page just for five minutes. And then an hour later, they're still clicking. So you know what it is for you that would kind of do that. So during the five minutes, you don't go anywhere near that. So if it's the TV or the computer, you just kind of do this and you back away because otherwise, once you start, you're not going to come back. Okay. So. Um, break. That's the second one. I'm going to finish this out and then I'm going to show you the third habit. 
The person reads for 30, five minute break, reads for 30, five minute break, reads for 30 more. So that's just their routine that they're following. Okay, and so um, I'm gonna draw a strange circle here. Okay, and I want you to look inside the circle. After all this time, how much time has student number two spent reading? Yeah, 90 minutes, right? The same as this person. It's actually taken them 10 extra minutes due to the breaks, but 90 minutes of reading. Beginning is good, end is good. So that's a total for this person of 60 minutes that are good. And then how much bad? 30, right? So the middle part. So just by doing those two things, the person goes from this to this, which is huge improvement. And people who try this often come back to me and you know what they say? They say, my memory's improving. And you know what I tell them? I say, no, it's not. It's the same exact memory you had before. You're just using it better and it's actually working better for you. It's not that your memory improves, it's just a smarter way to go about it. Okay, so I've had students tell me, if middle is bad, what can we do to cut the middle out? You know, you don't want bad stuff, so cut it out. Let's just have a beginning and end and then we'll remember everything. There has to be a middle. But by doing this, the middle shrinks. This is a huge middle here. That's a big problem. So this fixes that. But